Hello, welcome to another class. Today we are going to be talking about reflection of light. Remember we talked about in our last class how we see object and this is due to what? Reflection. The light coming from a source as you can see strikes this mirror which of course is the object and then moves to the other direction where anybody standing can see it. Okay? Now the light coming from the source, which is the source by your left hand side, as you can see, is called the incident ray. While the light that is reflected by the mirror is called the reflected ray. In between these two, you can draw a straight line. And if you measure these two angles, the first angle is called the angle of incidence, the second is called the angle of a reflection. You discover that both of them are equal. Okay? We can see objects because light from a source shines on the object, bounces off them, and then enters our eyes. When light bounces off a surface, we say that the light is reflected by the surface. So you understand the concept of a reflection. Reflection has to do with light bouncing on a surface. Mind you, such surface can be rough or plain. Now, let's illustrate what we mean by this reflection again so i get a proper understanding here is dala and his friend they both look like uh, who are with this Does this look like is this donka looks like a donka donka and and okay we're going to discuss that later now they put off the light in the first scene and what happened? I can't see anything. That's because we have no source of light in here. Now they put on the source of light. We can see the flashlight now. But we can see everything else too. Even the things that aren't light sources. Okay? Now the light is on. We can see the rubber. We can see the book. We can see the paint cup. We can see a lot of things there. Why? Because these materials reflect the light. That must mean that all the other things reflect light. Because when the light source is off, we don't or we can't see them. Alright? And when the light source is on, we do see them now. So that tells you the importance of light. In the concept of seeing and then reflection. Let's look at the sun and the moon. You know the sun is a major source of light on the earth. So we can see things clearly. The moon is not a light source. Take note. The moon is not a source of light. What happens is that we often see the moon quite clearly in the sky. We can see the moon when it reflects the light of the Sun. So what I just explained to you is what the moon does, but because we are on a planet yet, it appears to us that this is a light, it is not a light. You will see it as we proceed. Look at the sun. The sun is not just a source of light, but a source of heat energy as well. Can you see the heat energy? Can you see how powerful it is? That way this object shines from afar. As the Earth's only natural satellite, the moon has long been an object of fascination and confusion. The moon is very interesting when you look at it because it's fine from afar. But it's confusing because over some time you think it's light on its own. Meanwhile, it is not a light of its own. Over a course of 29 day circle, the moon shows us many different faces. These different phases are called phases and they are the result of the way the sun lights the moon's surface as the moon orbits it. Okay? Now we told you the movement of this celestial body. As the moon is moving, is orbiting the earth, as the earth is orbiting the sun, the moon can only be seen as a result of the sun's light reflecting off it. We can only see the moon when light is shining on it. It 
does not produce any light of its own. The moon does not produce any light of its own. So typically what we are seeing when you see the moon is the sunlight reflecting, shining on the moon and the moon reflecting its light back to earth. You see it shortly, look at the moon. Look at the typical look of the moon. Look at the closer look of the moon. Can you see it's not a light? Can you see it's opaque? It's looking more like an opaque body. Now, look at what you actually see during the evening. See the sunlight shining powerfully on the moon. And the moon reflecting this light on the surface of the earth. It will not appear to your eyes as if it is a, a, a light. The moon will be looking as if it is a light, but in a real sense, it is not a light. If you take off the sun, you won't see the moon again. Alright? You won't see the moonlight you are seeing again. So this now takes us to solar and the lunar eclipse. What is eclipse? When we talk of eclipse, we are talking about an astronomical event. Where one celestial body either partially or totally covers another celestial object. Okay? You know celestial object already. We're talking about the stars, the moon, the sun, alright, the earth. In space, there are all celestial bodies. Now, when one of these bodies come in between two bodies we say eclipse as a core and eclipse are two possible type that has been discussed when we talk of solar eclipse we are talking about the moon coming in between the earth and the sun so when the moon comes in between the earth and the sun we say eclipse as a core don't confuse eclipse from this reflection you are seeing here. This is not eclipse, alright? We will see eclipse as we go. You can see the moon is not in between the sun and the earth. Neither is anyone in between. So there is no eclipse here right now. Alright? When we talk of solar eclipse, we look at three types. We have the total eclipse, annular eclipse, and the partial eclipse. And when you talk about, about total eclipse, you already know. It means that the moon is completely in between the earth and the sun. Partial eclipse means that the moon is partially in between the earth and the sun. Alright? And then we'll look at the second kind of eclipse, which is called lunar eclipse. Lunar eclipse occur when earth casts a shadow on the full moon. What does that mean? It means that the earth comes in between the sun and the moon. And it blocks the sun's rays from directing or from directly reaching the moon so the earth blocks the light so that no light touches the moon all light comes to the earth it will not be very bright we call that lunar eclipse all right lunar eclipse only happen at full moon at full moon we mean when the moon is completing its 29 days movement all right why at new moon we mean when it is just starting its movement this is a very good illustration of solar eclipse look at the moon look at the sun look at the earth now the moon is in between the sun and the earth this is what we mean by what solar eclipse i know you'll be wondering what does it really mean? When this kind of scenario occurs, afternoon will become evening in our eyes. Okay, I've experienced it once, once before, and I thought at that time that the world has come to an end because it was actually in the afternoon, and all of a sudden we experienced darkness. This was dark for some time before it now moved. At. I was so curious and I asked, What happened? And I told me it's eclipse. Alright? Some people call it eclipse of the sun. Okay? So 
call it Eclipse of the Sun. It is called Solar Eclipse. You want to find out when the next solar eclipse is coming out, right? I will tell you. The next solar eclipse will be on the 21st of June 2020, alright? And it will be very visible in any room. It will start at about 5 o'clock. So if you only want to witness it, scientists have predicted that this is going to happen at this date. Lunar eclipse. So, the moon is behind the earth. That is, the earth is directly between the sun and the moon. That is what we mean by what lunar eclipse. Now, what happens? At this case now, it is now the earth that will not cast shadow on the earth, on the moon. When likely is this going to happen? You can see it there. You can witness this on June 15, 2020 at Enugu as well. Okay? It will start at around 6. Alright? So if you are interested, I travel to Enugu to witness it. Reflecting and absorbing light. When we talk of reflecting and absorbing light, by now you know what we are talking about. Some materials are good reflection of light, better than other materials. Small surfaces such as mirror and shiny surfaces such as metal or foil reflect light so well that we can see images of ourselves on them. Other materials like paper and plastic reflect little, reflect light well enough for us to see the object clearly, but not well enough for us to be able to see our images on the surface of the object. These materials absorb absorb some of the light that shine on them, and rays of light also reflect off and scatter from some surfaces now let me explain if you take your mirror and put it in front of you and put off the light let it be no let it be dark you won't see anything the moment you put on the light you discover you are seeing image of yourself the reason is because the mirror does not withhold any of the light at all as the light is coming, it turns back the light to the opposite direction, as I showed you earlier. And if you are standing in that direction, because it's a very good reflecting material, you will be able to see a clear image of yourself, because all the lights are not shining on you as well. You will see a clear image of yourself in front of the mirror. The mirror is not the only thing that does that. You know your stainless plate or your stainless cup at home. Those ones that in the fall they make a lot of noise. Yes. Try to look at it, you see yourself reflecting on it. Another good example is that is in the movie The Lion King. You remember when Simba was taken by the monkey to the river? At that point in time the river was a very good state. It was not disturbed. And then Simba took his face closely to the river where the source of light was shining. I want to see a clear image of himself, all right? A clear image of what? Himself. So, surfaces like that, that, why other surfaces that are rough a bit, like your notebook, your table, your chair, those ones cannot reflect all the light. They absorb some of the light, that is, they're taking some of the light and then reflect other ones. So, the reflection they give is not shiny enough. For you to see your face or your image on them, but it's shiny enough for you to identify them. That's why at times if you shine your shoe with polish and brush it very well, you discover that it will be shiny. You understand? And there are times you don't do that, it will not be as shiny. The difference is the reflection. When it's well polished, a lot of reflection is given off. All right, a lot of light is not absorbed. A lot of light is given out. But when it is dull, a lot of light is what absorbed. This is a very good illustration of what we are saying. Look at when it is plain. Can you see? Can the four lights that are coming in? They are four. How many are going out? They are also four. But when the surface is rough, that is this last one you are seeing here, the third one. 
how many are coming in? Four. How many do you see going at? Three. And they are what? Scattered. Even the fourth one is going back to where it's coming from. Okay? So this is what we mean by reflection on, on rough uh, surfaces. So because the light are not being reflected totally, you will not be able to see image of yourself clearly. That brings us to the end of this class. Click on the next activity to carry out your assignment or the next task.